they say out there in the convention. Uh, John chapter number 4. And look with me, if you will, uh, down around verse 20, somewhere along in there. This is the story of the woman, Jesus, encountering the woman at the well in John 4. He reads her mind here, as he can anybody's, and they get into a discussion about religious beliefs. And then he makes a statement here that I want to take and, and build the message around this morning. Look at verse number, um, he, he, he told her her living situation wasn't right there in verse 18. And verse 19, she said, you must be a prophet. And he said, verse 20, uh, she said, our fathers worshipped in this mountain. As soon as she found out he's a preacher, she wanted to bring up religious differences. Our fathers worship this mountain, and you say Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Jesus said in verse 21, Woman, believe me, this is John 4, 21, The hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what. Isn't that a sad statement? People just out there worshiping, they don't even know what to worship. We know. How, how narrow-minded, how, how schismatic, how divisive. He said, we know what we worship. That's what the Lord said. For salvation is of the Buddhist. No, salvation is of the Hindu. No, he said salvation is of the Jews. Jews. And uh, look, look at verse 24, for time's sake. God is a spirit. Capital S, a spirit. That means God is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God. Now look, hold your finger there just a second. The modern versions of the Bible change that and put a little spirit, the S, and say, God is spirit. And that's not true. Your modern versions are wrong. God is not spirit. God is a particular spirit. Now, there's a lot of stuff out here, spirit, that ain't God. Amen? There's a lot of false, evil spirit. So, as always, when the King James Bible says it, count it, take it to the bank, throw the other ones out. Verse number 24, he said, God is a spirit, capital S, and they that worship Him must worship Him. How? In spirit, there's your little S, and in truth. You can't worship God without His spirit, and you can't worship God without His truth. There is no such thing as real worship of God without His Spirit and without His truth. Can't be done. I've seen a lot of people who've got a lot of spirit and no truth. I've seen some got a lot of truth and dead as a hammer and no spirit. You've got to have both. So this morning, I, I want to preach on that subject that Jesus said. He said, we know what we worship. Just a hair, brother. Uh, down just a hair. Now listen, I want to preach this morning on the subject... How we know we have the right one. How we know we have the right one. It is constantly now being discussed that all religions are the same. And the only way that, only reason me and you believe like we believe is because we was born here and we grew up here in the Bible. If we'd have been born somewhere else, we'd have grew up believing something else. And they're just as right as this. And nobody has the right to say that other religions are wrong and theirs is right. I want to preach this morning on how we know, not think, hope, or guess, how we know we have the right one. Why is being a Christian different and exclusive from Hinduism, being a Buddhist, being a Muslim? I mean, you're going to hear it more and more and more, y'all. They're trying to break down all the walls and barriers. Bring, the Antichrist is going to hit all religions up under one. He's going to rule the world, cause them to take the mark. It's coming. I mean, the world is ripe for it right now. Just in the last couple of weeks, we can't even keep up with the stuff that's going on. How do we know we have the right one? Well, I'm going to give you just a few thoughts that might surprise you this morning. Uh, so I want you to stay with, you, with me. Many religions and philosophies in the world, every one of them claiming to be the right one. As soon as you're saved, they come in like a swarm of bees on you, buzzards, trying to get you to believe like them. How do you know you've got the right faith, the right book, the right belief, and the right spirit? I'll never forget a, a shocker and eye-opener to me was, I got saved when I was 18. You've heard my testimony. I got on fire for the Lord. I started preaching when I was 19. 
and uh, I was uh, uh, very, very, very young. I mean, uh, when I was 19, I, I started preaching, and me and these boys got on fire for God. We knew in our heart, the Holy Spirit was in our heart, and we knew it was right. And so we made out and took off to convert the world. I said, bless the Lord, I've got it. I've got the truth, and I did that. I've got the King James Bible. I'm going to go out, and I'm going to make everybody believe just like I believe. You remember? I remember feeling. And so me and these guys, we took what we call missionary journeys. And uh, we'd load up a van. We didn't have no money. We'd all put our money together and sleep in a van. We'd go to Knoxville, Tennessee. We'd go to, over at Gatlinburg, just give out tracks all day long, sleep in the van, and uh, eat a Crystal Burger, and come back uh, the next day. That's the truth. And uh, we had a blast. I mean, we didn't go shopping. We, we didn't get to eat much, but we had fun. And then, so we planned this big trip to Atlanta. And I'd never been to Atlanta but uh, once, and I went there where our basketball uh, team won the district championship. They sent us down there for something. And uh, we went down there. But that's the only time I've ever been to Atlanta. I said, we're going to Atlanta. And bless God, we're going to go out on the street. And we're going to see uh, people saved. And, and revival is going to come out of this wicked city. Well, here we went. I mean, Hoppy Tom Holler, uh, Nebo, uh, Marion, North Carolina. We all went. Here we got out of the van on the streets of Atlanta, Georgia. Nineteen years old. I said, there and I said, all right, here we are. Where's the sinners? Uh, we're going to we're gonna send them. And I remember going out there that day, and I looked, and there was a guy uh, standing there, and he had his arm out like this, like that, and a snake was wrapped around his arm. And he was standing there like he was spaced out, like that. And I went, uh, uh, would you like to... You know, they they don't even know you're there, man. He's out there somewhere, just a trip somewhere out in another world somewhere. And then uh, somebody said, uh, look, look, brother, look, look behind you, look. And about that time, these two guys stepped out, and it looked like Moses had stepped right out of the Bible pages, and there he stood, robe and all, brother, beard, and he was going, the end is near. And, so, and I felt a weird spirit come on in. I thought, good night. That ain't right. I don't know what he is, but he's wrong. He's crazy. I mean, you know, when the Holy Spirit's in you, you can automatically tell when something, something different. And then I said, well, let's go. We went out giving out tracks and there. And then they had these guys set this little table up right here. And they had these little cookies and literature, weird-looking little cookies. And these guys standing behind this table, and they had all their hair shaved off except one little sprig of hair like this come right up there like that. And then they had a, that, that dot right there that looked like somebody busted an egg on their forehead. And that yellow stuff just run down their face. Honest to goodness, that's awful. Uh, some guy, and, and I thought, what is that? I, said, I ain't never seen nothing like that. And, uh, and they had their religious literature out here, and they were giving, would you like a cookie? I said, I ain't eating one of them cookies. I'm afraid I'll turn into whatever you are. And, and, uh, and then, and then uh, we left them, and, we, and then we got into an argument with somebody else, and then somebody said, listen, I hear music. I can hear something going, boom, boom. I said, what is that? It's a rock concert. We walked down this big old park, and I said, there's a rock concert going on. Come on, boys, let's go give out tracks. And I, the closer I got, I said, I don't know what that is. That ain't, that ain't a normal rock concert. The guys had on, like, white suits and stuff. And I got a little closer and a little closer, and there was people all over that grass laying down there in the middle of that park, and these guys were up on the stage, and the guy was going like this. He had to get there, and he's going, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, Holy. and I said, "Oh my goodness, this is Christian stuff." And I said, "Good Lord, over here's over here's a, a Buddha, and over there's Moses, and over there's somebody handling a snake." And I said, "This place is crazy." And I mean, it didn't take me long to figure out that converting the world is a little bit harder than what us guys thought it was. I'm telling you, buddy, this world is messed up religious. Every one of them thinking they're the right one. And, I, and then I, met, I run into Jehovah's Witnesses, and I run into Mormons, and I run into uh, everything else. And, and so uh, I will take a few minutes this morning and say, I know we've got the right one. You say, well, Brother Danny, are you saying other religions are wrong? I'm saying Jesus said we know what we worship. They worship God in spirit and truth. I'm saying there's only one God and one way to worship Him. You don't have to agree with me, but you do got to agree with Him. And He said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man, no man, no man comes unto the Father except by me. Islam and Christianity can't merge together. They can't be one religion. We, can't, we don't all worship the same God. 
Somebody's bad wrong, people. And I'm fixing to show you how I know that we have the right one. Quickly this morning, this is not the message. This is only the introduction. I give you seven marks of a cult. Are you listening? This is not the message, the introduction. Mark number one. A cult will claim extra biblical revelation. They always claim some big prophet got a revelation from God. That is not biblical. There's your first mark. Number two, a cult always adds works for salvation. There is no cult or false religion that believes you're saved by grace plus nothing minus nothing by grace through faith. Number three, a cult always gives you an uncertain hope. They never know where they're going when they die. It's always maybe hope, think, might, stuff like that. Number four, a cult always has or usually has an earthly head. One big guy at the top of the pole that's on earth telling everybody else what to do. Maybe he's living or dead. Number five, a cult always claims special discoveries that nobody's ever... No, they know stuff. They find golden plates. They find trinkets and artifacts to back up their religion. Just a bunch of junk like that. Number six, a cult sells things out on the street. I did not say everybody did that's a cult. I said that's a mark of cults. So in the airport, selling a little stupid little book. This guy stopped me in the airport and he was giving out religious books and uh, I'll not say which religion he's in at, at this time. And he was selling a book and he said, uh, he said, uh, uh, free books. And I said, oh, they're free, huh? I want one. He said, well, we asked for a donation of $10. And I said, oh, I thought you said it's free. He said, they are. I said, okay, I want my free book. He said, but we asked for a donation of $10. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you selling these for $10? Oh, no, they're free. Well, then, but I can't have one unless I give you $10. And you're giving it to me. I pinned him down, you know, and he didn't like that. Uh, he got mad. That's what they're doing, you know. That's like saying for a love offering. If I was Belks or Sears, I'd use that. For a love offering of $150, you can have a new suit, preacher. Uh, you, we're giving them away for a love offering of $150. That's, that's a bunch of bull. Uh, I'm going to tell you something, brother. If you're charging, just say you're charging and quit lying about it. Be straight up about it. Amen. Ain't that right? Uh, that's a mark of a cult. Number seven, a cult. Are you listening carefully to me? A cult never majors on scriptures that are aimed at Christians. Their base for their belief is in Ezekiel or Ecclesiastes or some of those books. I'm not saying they're not part of the Word of God or not important. I'm just saying they're, they never major on church doctrine and epistles of Paul the Apostle to the Gentile. Never. They always base their doctrine. That's how they get off. So there's the way you know cults. Like Mary Baker Glover Patterson Eddy, uh, who began their movement. Ellen G. White of the Seventh-day Disadvantages. And Pastor Russell and George uh, Rutherford of the Jehovah Witness cult. And so forth and so on. Now, how do we know we have the right one? You can take weeks and study this. I'm going to give it to you in 20 minutes. Are you ready? Number one, you know how I know we got the right faith, the right church, the right religion? You know how I know? Number one, this will shock you. You think I'm going to give you some theological, deep, historical truth? Number one, our religion, the Christianity, is the only religion in the world that attracts little children. Jesus said, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not. Meaning little children wanted to be around Jesus. This is the only religion, Christianity, in the world that little kids are attracted to. They like it. They love Jesus. They love to go to church. They were in the junior church this morning. They are having a blast. Other religions sort of force their kids into it and they grow up and they're bored to death until they finally get confirmed and then they go, you know, and then they move on and on and on. Listen, kids automatically respond to the story of Jesus Christ and His love. It's in, the, in them. They, they love it. I'm telling you something. You know, you know why I think kids like real Christianity? Because kids are not hypocrites uh, like older people. They, they, I mean, buddy, they, they just tell it like it is and they call it like they see it. And uh, that, I get a kick out of it. I honestly do. I, I, I'm, uh, uh, I think everybody, I think everybody ought to teach a class of three and four and five and six-year-olds for at least a year. I think everybody ought to. You talk about an education. I'm telling you, or at least be around them. And uh, teach them in Bible school. Kids can, they can spot a fake three miles away. They can tell. I mean, if I come out here this morning and I had on a robe and my collar turned around backwards and I walked out here and I said, the Lord is in His holy temple. 
Let all the earth keep silence before Him. Amen. Amen. You know what every kid in here do? They'd say, what in the world wrong with him? You've got to be a wicked adult to fall for something like that. You've got to be somebody that's looking for an excuse to sin to respond to something like that. That ain't normal, people. Nobody, you think that guy acts like that in normal life? Everybody that knows me knows that I talk just like I'm talking now when you see me tomorrow or in the gym playing ball or at home and mowing my grass saying, I don't suddenly go into a religious trance when I come in here and uh, but all the earth keeps silence before you. Oh, that's crazy. I mean, uh, only people, only people that have fall for something like that is religious people that want to live ungodly and ease their conscience once in a while. You think that guy talks like that in real life? You think he sees the other priest uptown tomorrow and says, Oh, brother, I did good on the golf course today. I hope you and your family are one. No, Lord, no. I'm telling you, this is the only religion that attracts little boys and little girls. You know something, buddy? I've said, we got little boys in this church. I mean, we got little girls in the church. And they look up and they look up and they see somebody singing and shouting. You know what? I've had little boys, some of you know, I've had a lot of them in this church say, You know what? I want to grow up and do just what Brother Danny's doing. I want to stand up there. I want to preach God's Word. I want to tell people right and wrong. You know what? That's the way you know you got the right one, buddy. It attracts little children. You see, little children, they, they can figure it out. They said one time this little kid come in, and uh, 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 he, he, they, they think things through. You know, they don't just sit there and act religious like we do. This little kid come in one time. His grandpa died, and he found out, and he said, he found his glass. He said, look, Mom, Papa won't be able to see a thing up in heaven. <laughs> Here's his glasses. Uh, that, that's the way they think. Kids one time come to church and he said, uh, teacher said, my dog got run over. My dog's dead. And the teacher thought she would comfort him. She said, honey, that's all right. Your little dog is up in heaven with God. And he said, well, what does God want with a dead dog? <laughs> you see, that's, that's how different they are than adults. One kid had a dog dead one time. He said, my dog's dead out here in the yard. And, uh, and, and said, uh, that, and the mama said, that's all right, honey. Your little dog died and went to heaven. And he said, well, what happened? Did God throw him back down here? He in heaven. <laughs> right there he is. Uh, but that's, 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 that's what they think about false religion. Amen. That's what they thought. They said one time a teacher taught her class about these things. And she said, now remember, boys and girls, you better watch out. And be careful, said, because Lot's wife, she looked back and turned into a pillar of salt. The little kid said, that ain't nothing. My mama looked back and turned into a telephone pole. <laughs> That's right, brother. I, I love those kids. And you learn all that by kids. There's something wrong with the religion or something wrong with the church that don't have, have no place. That's why I let them deacons sing. Man, I get a blessing out of that. I get a blessing out of them little kids. They can be just as much a part of the worship service as the pastor or the or the Sunday school teacher. That's the way you know you got the right one. Amen. I heard one kid went to church one Sunday, and he came to church, and uh, uh, he came back home. And he said, Mama, he said, I heard the preacher coming over to me, and he prayed for me that I'd always have a good Christian home. And, Heck, I want to live with you guys. <laughs> that's bad, ain't it? That's awful. Uh, but that's the way they are. Uh, you just can't fool them. You can't fool them. Amen. Uh, like that modern art exhibit. They're looking at a modern art exhibit. You know, it looked like where somebody just took paint and just slung it up against the wall. And a little kid punched his buddy and said, let's get out of here before they say we did it. Uh, that's the way kids are. Now, if you went to college, you'd say, oh, isn't that beautiful? You know. Uh, but they got better sense. I mean, a little kid knows the real thing. Amen. I mean, you know, they just come in. They know it. I'm telling you something, brother. They, they, they just got it. They, they said one time, uh, uh, they said, uh, they told his kid, they said, now you got you to gotta be quiet in church. Don't be talking. You got to be quiet. And he said, is it because people are sleeping? How true that is. How true that is. Hey, this kid, I got a bunch of stories. I ain't got time to tell them all to you. But a Sunday school teacher asked all the kids to draw a picture 
of, of something that they, a song or something at church or some Bible story and turn it in, they're going to discuss it. So they drew all the pictures, you know, David and Goliath, John and Whale, everything. She, this kid turned in a picture, had this little airplane and a man and a woman sitting in an airplane taking off and another man sitting in the back. She said, honey, I'm having a little trouble understanding your picture. What is that? She said, that's Mary and Joseph. Their flight out of Egypt. Dummy. She said, well, who's that other man? She said, ah, that's Pontius the Pilot. <laughs> I mean, you, you Greek and Hebrew scholar couldn't figure that out. Uh, I mean, you ought to be around them. You ought to just hang out with them sometimes. I mean, you ought to just get a blessing, amen, and, and be around. One little kid one time, he's just sitting there, sitting there, little old boy's talking. He said, boy, I bet old Noah sure did fish a lot when he was on that boat. Man, wouldn't that have been something? And his buddy said, no, he didn't. He didn't have the two worms. <laughs> That's pretty good, ain't it? I like that. Amen. I, I, they can stare a hole through you. Ain't that right? They sure can, buddy. I'm telling you something, brother. They, they, can, they can stare a hole right through you and never look back. Amen. They're so honest. They said one time, I like this one. Said one time, his kid said, uh, looking at the rainbow, and, she, and one kid said, Isn't that amazing, Mama? Look at all those beautiful colors. And God did every bit of that with his left hand. She said, What? She said, God did all that with his left hand. Isn't that amazing? She said, I don't understand you, honey. Why, why did you say that? She said, well, the Bible says Jesus is sitting on his right hand. That's genius, man. I don't know. How did you figure that out? My favorite one. Give me this. My favorite one. i got to go. Uh, so this little kid come in. One time. She was drawing pictures and stuff. She drew a picture, turned it in. It was a big picture of this big, gigantic grizzly bear. Standing there like this, and his eyes was crossed. Like that. And underneath it, it said, gladly. The teacher looked and looked and looked. A cross-sided bear. She said, honey, I'm sorry, but I can't figure out what this is. You're going to have to tell me. The kid looked at her like, are you crazy? We sing that song all the time. What? Gladly, my cross-eyed bear. How dumb some of you, you still can't even get that. I, I, but I'm telling you, that's the only religion in the world that attracts little kids. Y'all are catching in late. I've got to go. I ain't got time to fool with you. Uh, listen, listen. That's the only religion in the world that does that. I've got to move on. I, we talk about kids' stories all day. I said it's the only religion in the world that attracts little children. Number two. You know, I know we got the right one. We have the only religion in the world that manifests itself in tears of joy. I don't know if you ever thought about this or not, but Christians are the only religious group in the world that cry because we're so happy. Now, if you, I'm sure you've had that happen to you. I'll never forget when I first got saved, I got the victory, I got right with the Lord, and people, I was going down the road one day, and I just started bawling. And I was the happiest I'd ever been in my life. You know what the world thinks? Why are you so sad? We've had people in church say, what's, what's, what's wrong with her, Mama? <laughs> you know, she's going, oh, nothing, she's just happy. Happy? The world don't look at tears with happiness. They don't, they don't equate crying and being happy. I remember one time I got up one Sunday morning a long time ago. And I got up one morning and I was, I was in, brushing my teeth, fixing my hair and I got to thinking about what the Lord done for me. I, it had been a long time ago. And I got to thinking about here I am getting ready to go to church on Sunday morning. Here I am on my way to heaven. I'm not going to burn in hell. I'm going to heaven. I'm telling you, buddy, big tears started coming down my cheeks. I said, glory to God, listen, brother, that other religions don't have that. You don't go to a Buddhist temple. I mean, a little kid don't get up and say, Buddha, what me this I know. Well, Confucius tell me so. <laughs> they don't do that. They don't care. Buddha don't care about them little kids. There's no shouting in Buddhism. There's no shouting in fake religion. But buddy, when old time Holy Ghost 
salvation gets down in your soul just right, it'll produce some tears of joy. When a man joins another religion, he's taught into it. Or he's learnt graduates into it. Or he becomes confirmed into it. You know how you become a Christian? You're born into it. It's a supernatural birth. It's not, you don't sign anything. You don't learn anything. You're born like a baby's born in the hospital. This is a hospital birthing room right here. And when somebody gets saved, they're born again. Right? That's the way you become a Christian. It's supernatural. It's not a natural process, people. Hallelujah! That's the only religion in the world that has that. Number three. Number three. I'll say quickly. There's the only religion in the world that has the fruits. What do you mean by that? Jesus said, by their fruit you shall know them. How do I know which is right, Lord? By their fruit. An evil tree produces evil fruit. A good tree produces good fruit. A Christian tree produces Christians. Christians, I'm not saying Christians are perfect. I'm saying this. Christianity produces the fruit uh, that was the salt of the earth that reaches sends the missionaries to the ends of the earth to reach the heathen with the gospel, to tell them the truth of the Word of God and tell her the fruit. You hear life-changing testimony. I, I'm planning on maybe using the testimonies of the youth rally. Ex-Muslims, ex-Hindus, ex-atheists that got saved and said, I've never found anything like this. Jesus touched me. He saved me. My life is different. I, listen, brother, we don't teach them into it. God will jerk one out of a pool hall somewhere out of a crack house and clean up their life. And they'll stand up and sing and witness and live for God 30 years and go on to heaven when they die. That's the fruits. You hear testimonies of people everywhere you go. George Mueller, the famous prayer warrior, George Mueller cared for 10,000 orphans, raised several million dollars, and never took up an offering. And prayed the power of God down on them boys and girls. And sometimes they'd be sitting at the table with nothing to eat. And he'd bow his head and say, Everybody bow your head. Thank the Lord for the food. And there wasn't no food. And buddy, a knock come on the door like that. And about that time, somebody would say, oh, With a bunch of sacks of flour and some corn and stuff, and set it down and say, For some strange reason, we want to bring this over here. And I mean, I could tell you story after story after story after story. I could tell you times the Lord's answered my prayers. I know He's answered my prayers. I know it. You say, No, Danny, it just happened. It was an accident. Listen, I prayed prayers sometimes. I was down on my knees praying for a guy one time, and the guy was in Florida. I didn't even know where he was. And I was down on my knees begging, God, get a hold of him. God, get a hold of him. God, get a hold of him. Hadn't spoke to him in forever, and my phone rang while I was on my knees. I got up and answered the phone, and it was that guy, and I had the message to give to him. I was no accident. Oh, it's just an accident. Not over and over and over and over. Hey, somebody big than me and you in this stuff, people. There's somebody bigger than me and you in this church. He's taking care of us. He's watching over us. He's answering our prayers. The fruit of the Christian life proves we got the right one. You say, well, I was watching TV, preacher, and they was talking about all the different religions being the same, and it sort of made me, well, young, that's why I'm preaching this. It'll help you. I'll say this and I'm through. Ours is the only religion in the world that tells the truth and don't change it with the times and every time science comes out with something or something's politically correct. We've had the same message since the days of the apostles that we have today. I stand here this morning preaching the same gospel the apostle Paul preached 2,000 years ago. Not change one bit. Truth don't change. Amen. Other religions, I can name a few this morning, that when the world gets something popular, they adapt and change their beliefs to it, so the world will still like them. They that like in, in, in aliens and in 
in abortion and in all kind of... Listen, we've been preaching the same old book for 2,000 years and we ain't got no plan to change it. The truth is relevant to any age or dispensation that we find ourselves in. It's still... Listen, the old book still says there's a hell. It still says there's a heaven. Science has never disproved any of that. Science has never disproved anything in the Bible. For that matter, I'm telling you the truth stands all the way through the centuries. We don't change our theology every few years to meet the world's system or demands. We still believe that Jesus Christ, God's Son, came into this world to save sinners and that one day we'll stand before Him and be judged though we under somewhere in the great beyond. It's still the same. If you ain't been to church in 30 years, you ought to come in here this morning and hear me preach exactly the same thing I preached 30 years ago. And I got it on tape. I can prove it. We preach Jesus Christ is the only Son of God. Not one of thee. Not one of the messengers in a great line of messengers. The only! In his infancy, he startled a king. In his boyhood, he puzzled the doctors. In his manhood, he walked on the billows and told the sea to lay down and go to sleep. He healed the multitudes without medicine and made no charges for his services. He never wrote a book, yet all the libraries in the world couldn't form, uh, pu publish all the books that could be written about him. He never wrote a song, yet he has furnished the theme of more songs than any other one individual that's ever lived on planet Earth. Amen? He, he never uh, marshaled an army or founded a college and all the schools together cannot boast of as many students as he have. The great men have come and gone, yet he lives. Death could not hold him. Death could not destroy him. Grave could not hold him. He got up. He's coming back. We've been preaching it all these years. He said we worship him in spirit and in truth. That's how we know we got the right one. A professor asked a little girl one time. She said, "He said, which Christ do you worship?" She said, "I worship the one that rose from the dead." You couldn't get a better theological answer than that right there. Other, listen. You know where Buddha is? Dead. You know where Muhammad is? Dead. He had major problems. You know where Jesus Christ is? He's sitting at the right hand of God. People say, well, you don't know that. Well, prove he's not there. Go to that tomb, find him. You can't find one bone of his. He's gone. You know how I know we got the right one? That's why you ought to shout and thank God he did let you live in this part of the world and hear the truth. You ought to praise God every day of your life. We ought to be shouting happy this morning that God let us know the truth. You say, there's people out there in the world say, well, truth is relevant. So if you believe something to be true, it's true for you. That, that, that's crazy. That's ridiculous. Two plus two is four. It doesn't matter what you believe, what you've been taught, how you were raised, how you look at it, how many dreams you had. Two plus two is four. Truth is absolute. Amen? Somebody, I'm, I, the atheist message I preached by Sunday night, they've been up. Bunch. I got a text from a guy in Tennessee. He said, man, you wouldn't believe the... Somebody said the, that we believe the earth was flat and because it has four corners, you know, that's north, south, east, and west. They said, they're so uneducated, they can't even figure it out. And uh, uh, they said, flat earth, flat earth. They said, well, if the earth is a ball, how can everybody look and see him coming? Because he's coming from the north. He's coming that way. North is up for everybody, no matter where you live at on the planet. There ain't no mistakes in that book. The mistake is in your brain. The mistake is you trying to make an excuse to get to live for the devil. Let me tell you something, people. There's a God. There's a heaven. There's a hell. And every one of us are racing toward judgment while we sit here in this church. If I was you here this morning, you know what I'd do? I'd come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Deep, deep down inside while I've been preaching, Somebody spoke to you and said, You better listen. He's telling you the truth. You know who that is? That's the Holy Spirit. For you that are hearing this, or hear it on radio, internet, all over the country, if God's dealing with your heart this morning and you don't know 
that you know, that you know, that you know that you've been born again. I wouldn't walk out that door this morning unless I knew I'd been to Jesus. Too much evidence. We ain't even got time to get in. Listen, if the Bible's not true, why is everything turning out just like it said it would? I'd like somebody to tell me, is that an accident? I mean, the wars, the rumors of wars, the, the, all the, the same-sex marriage, the unrest, the unbelief, the disease, the pestilence, the earthquakes. Why is everything happening just like it said? You know why? God foretells the future and lets it happen to prove to you that His Word's right. That's how we know, in a nutshell, how we have the right one. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. I want our heads bowed and our eyes closed just a minute this morning. Just a minute this morning. We'll take just a minute. This cold, snowy January morning be a good day for somebody here to step out make that step and come to the Lord Jesus Christ if you're here this morning you say brother Danny I know I'm saved I know I'm saved but I ain't been living like I should live please pray for me I know the Lord's right I, I need help pray for me would you let us pray for you this morning just slip up your hand Slip it up, take it right back down. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. God bless you. Hands all over the building. Hands all over the building. Why don't you make that step this morning? Why don't you make that step you need to make? Get down. It ain't going to get no easier. It ain't going to get no, no easier than it's going to be this morning. Just get on down here and say, you know what? I'm going to get ready to meet God because I know what God did. Some's already coming. You come on right now. If you're here this morning and you've never been saved, say amen. Come on, boys. One of you men come pray with these young men coming. You let, you let God speak to your heart this morning. Will you do that? Will you let God speak to your heart this morning? Sir, Daddy, will you let God speak to your heart this morning? We're going to pray. Get out of your seat. Come on down here and let's pray. Father, do what ought to be done right now. Help that man. Help that woman. Help that boy to come to Jesus Christ before it's too late. Whatever and however you do for us, we'll praise you and thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just as I am